So I got a mysterious call a few days ago. It was from Rolex. And I said to myself, why not try the Rolex experience to see what's all the fuss about it. And I purchased a Rolex Explorer 2 and these are my initial thoughts on this G-Shock of Rolex. Enjoy. A great occasion to see possibly for the last time, from the last batch, a Rolex Explorer 2. Knowing that this year Rolex will celebrate 50 years since the Rolex Explorer 2 was launched and another version will be soon presented. So let's look closely at this brand new G-Shock of Rolex. Firstly, this is a short unboxing video. The full story will come once I collect more data about this Explorer. As I said, the purpose of this purchase was by curiosity. I wanted to try the Rolex experience and I bought it straight from the AD a few days ago at the retail price being subscribed to the list. Obviously, today we are looking at the secondary unboxing, the first one happening in the AD, where the kind lady had to remove all the stickers to prefill my details to take my money, obviously, to set the time and to size the bracelet. But getting back to the stickers, I really wanted the case back stickers to protect it from scratches, but she said that they are not allowed to leave them on the watch. Anyway, she missed a few, haha. -ha. And I do have to say, I like the packaging of Rolex. The cream extra box embossed with the Rolex logo is quite cool. Inside we have the green plastic box that, to be honest, it's not bad at all. Even though the wooden box like from Omega is way better. Inside we have the watch that comes with that plastic protective bezel that I consider it quite cool. Having a small elastic on the left hand side that keeps the ring flexible. And the Rolex superlative chronometer ceiling. As for the plastic smell, the one from Rolex smells better than the Tudor one, I assure you. And inside, on the cap of the box, we have the card, the warranty and the manual. Pretty straightforward. But overall, I can say that the Rolex packaging complements their products and their overall branding. And as first impressions, this watch is big and wears pretty large on the wrist. Even though it has a 42mm in diameter, it took me a couple of days to understand and to convince myself that this is not a diving watch with a rotating bezel. Those ones having smaller dials and increased chapter rings. So yes, it confused me a bit, until I understood that the specific of the dial needs to be bigger legible and loomed accordingly, for expeditions and for cave explorations. And judging by the case size, I would say that the taper of the bracelet is a bit too dramatic for this explorer, I might say unbalanced. Another thing that feels to unbalance the shape of the case is the end links composition. I do like the central links as a father, let's say, that holds the bracelet, where for example, the end link of Tudor is a mother, the father link being on the bracelet. But getting back to the pronounced center link, it unbalances the entire case. Instead of being rounded at the sides and straight on the end lugs, it creates a diamond aspect. That I consider it too much for the case. And I'm one of those who are against the Rolex hype, still I have to admit the quality is there. The watch feels courageous and well made. Every visible facet of it is very well defined, the finishes as well, possibly the best I've ever seen. And I said visible because Rolex spends less to no time on non-visible parts. As for example, the case back and the end lugs. And inside of the clasp as well, there is no time spent on finishes, which in a way, I appreciate that. That's the point on investing money in something that cannot be seen or should not be shown. And the general specifications of the Explorer 2 are the following. An oyster steel case of 42mm with a 12.5mm in height, a lug to lug of 49mm and a lug width of 21mm as the newer sub. It features a sapphire crystal with non-reflective coating but it has on the cyclops, the date being indeed really clear. A waterproofness of 100m even though it has a screw down crown. And the movement proposed, the in-house 3187 with a power reserve of 48 hours, working in COSC and Rolex certification at plus minus 2 seconds per day. And a GMT complication that swipes once per 24 hours and communicates with the fixed bezel. The dial of the Explorer is a well dark lacquer dial with highly legible chroma-like indexes with long lasting blue loom. I can see possibly better than the one from the Ceramic Seamaster 300M. Still overall I would complain that the dial is busy, it has too many hands. Also from the legibility point of view, the hands are ghosted, the polished metal disappearing on reflections provided by the crystal. My favorite of all still 
being the GMT hand, very well designed, the proportion of the arrow is very well assessed. Continued with that tip, that communicates very well with the orange explorer tube text. A thing that I like a lot is the flat sapphire crystal that exceeds the bezel, being a bit boxed, bringing a bit of vintage vibe to it. It is something that I haven't seen often on watches in general, except for the boxed vintage reissues. There is also the polished chapter ring with the Rolex inscriptions that adds even more complexity to the dial. And on the bottom there is the serial number of the watch that can be found on the card and on the lug spacing as well. The bezel seem to be very well articulated. I do love the sunburst brushing and here the explorer exceeds. The brush pattern seem to be very well defined on sunlight, ending up with the mirror polished edge, overall creating an interesting finish play. Brushed on top, polished on the edge, brushed on the case and polished on the sides. In fact the overall finish of the case is superlative. The mirror polished of the sides is impeccable, where the brushing is very well articulated and the edges are very sharp. Where the edge of the bottom part of the lugs are extremely sharp. I've never seen such sharp edges on a wristwatch. You can easily injure yourself when you maneuver it. The winding of this watch is superb. You can feel on the crown every thickening step when you gently wind it. As for the bracelet, as I said it feels unbalanced to the size of the watch. However, it's a well-made bracelet with three micro adjustments and a folding oyster lock safety clasp. When you close the clasp, everything is exact, certain. As for how it wears, I do wear wristwatches from 38 to 45 mm, and this one seem to be on the larger side. It lies wider on the wrist. The lug distance from the dial to the ends helps in this regard. And the annoying part is that the bottom part of the lugs is ruining the leather straps because of the sharp edge. Anyway, it looks way better on a leather than on a bracelet. It makes it lighter and takes a piece of metal that cover the wrist. But with more specific details, I'll come back on the full review of this G-Shock of Rolex. So to conclude, the Explorer 2 has an interesting culture behind. Separate from what we know from Rolex, a refined watch for explorers and for practical people, clearly a courageous design, not very popular also, not on focus for Rolex. This model having already 10 years since its birth. But I'm asking myself, this watch wasn't changed because it's too bad or because it was too good to be updated? Please let me know what do you think about this Rolex Explorer 2 in the comments down below. And hope you liked this short unboxing video. The full review will come up soon, as long as I collect more data about this watch. And if you want to be part of the channel, please subscribe for future episodes. I'm here weekly posting new updates. And until next time, stay safe.